Ian is the writer of Information War. Very nice to have uh, both of you uh, with us this evening. Um, you heard there, Samuel Green, mm -hmm. first of all, what Malcolm Rivkin was saying, that actually not a jot of difference has been made. In that case, is anyone going to be in any doubt? If, if Russia is trying to spread this, this chaos, is any, do you go along with that? Do you think that the information war is not one that Russia is actually going to win at the moment? Yes. It's so interesting to hear you use that word competitive. I'm wondering whether you think voters in a democracy uh, tend to be more trusting of their government than voters, you know, who are ruled by an autocracy. Do you think there is a difference there? I think there's a difference now because there's so much more. See, if I just if I just ask you, you, of course, worked in a government information agency. Did you as an agency lie to people? Did you lie to the public? Do you do you? accept that some of this must come from the institutions themselves? Uh, well, we wouldn't have had any credibility. We were an open source. To Pick up with Samuel. Um, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? We call it information or disinformation. It's actually using words very simply as a, as a weapon, as an armour. It's to deflect any criticism with a brand new agenda or a brand new criticism of your own. I mean, this is, this is practice stuff now, isn't well, it? Well, at this point, it's about, again, keeping the conversation. Samuel Green, Nancy Snow, thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for joining us. Meat has never been cheaper. In the developed world, it's gone from a way of marking high days and holidays to an everyday staple. As countries get richer, their inhabitants demand more meat, but our love of meat comes at a price. Intensive agriculture consumes huge quantities of land and water, and of course there's the live to them, and Donald Trump is the perfect guy to do it. What does it all mean for the price of goods and the future goodwill of the nations? Here's Helen Thomas. China. Uh, well, Michael Froman served as the US Trade Representative from 2013 to 2017. He joins us uh, from Washington, D.C. Ambassador Froman, good to have you on the programme. Do you think this is maybe a necessary connection, that we have now grown up with a full sense of how little goods cost, how, how cheap labour is overseas? This is the correction we always had coming. It's time to try something new, right? Well, you know, it's interesting. There's been a, a big debate, and there's, I think it's, hard, it's tough to see. I think if these are... Time for a views night, news night space for comment and opinion. Agata Gosniska Jakubowska from the Centre for European Reform argues that if the British government wants a proper deal on Brexit, it has to pay more attention to how the European Parliament works. <sighs> to a broken Scottish town in the 1970s where knife crime is rife. I met up with a Norwegian crime novelist to talk about his competitive spirit, his sense of prophecy and how he turned 16th century verse into a thriller. Of course, the first thing I... All we have time for tonight, but Evan is back tomorrow from all of us here. Good night. <laughs>